Hey, what's up everybody? This is Caroline. Welcome back to the fourth part of Beginning Metal. In this video, we'll make our triangle drawing more efficient by indexing into the vertices. We'll also find out how to send constant values to the GPU so that we can do some animation. At the end of this video, your app will look like this. We'll animate the yellow quad that you created in the challenge with a sign function so that it will move back and forth. To create two triangles with three vertices each, you need six vertices. But you can see that two of the vertices, that's V0 and V2, are repeated in the array. Imagine if this were a model with a million vertices. There could be a lot of repetition. We can improve on this by indexing into the array. We can make a new indices array listing the order of the vertices that we want to draw. In this array, we're describing two triangles. The first triangle uses vertex 0, 1 and 2, and the second triangle uses vertex 2, 3 and 0. We can then replace the array with six vertices and just list the four vertices. This is called index drawing as opposed to ordered drawing. And for models with many vertices, this will be much more efficient. So in code, as well as having a metal buffer for the vertices, we'll create a metal buffer for the indices of the size of the indices array. In the renderer's draw method, we also have to change the draw command to tell the GPU that we're now using indexed order. There will be a lot of occasions when you want to pass data to the GPU. For example, if you wanted to move all the vertices half a point to the right, you might send a constant value of 0.5 to the vertex function. The GPU will then add 0.5 to the x value of every vertex. To do this, we'll create a constant structure that will hold the values that the GPU will then apply to all the vertices. Instead of creating and sending a metal buffer as we did for the vertices and indices, we can directly send the address of the constant struct by using set vertex bytes. As long as the data is less than 4K, then we don't have to create new metal buffers. Metal can manage the buffer for us. As well as telling the GPU what the address of the struct is, we tell it how long the struct is and allocate a buffer index number, just as we did when we created the metal buffer. On the GPU side, with the vertex function, we pick up the constants as a parameter to the function. We give the parameter the attribute buffer1, which is the buffer number we allocated on the metal side. So by passing this constant value of move by 0.5, the vertex function will add 0.5 to the x position value of every vertex, and the whole quad will move to the right. In the demo, we'll add indexed order to our renderer and use a constant value in the vertex function to create this animation. This is how we left off the challenge from the previous video. We have two triangles colored yellow. The first thing we'll tackle is reducing the number of vertices sent to the GPU. In Renderer, I'll cut out the duplicate vertices from the vertices array. And I'll add in the new indices array. In this array, we're describing the two triangles and the order we want to draw the vertices in. I'll create a new metal buffer property for the indices and create the buffer in build model. In the renderer draw method, I'll unwrap the index buffer and because I'm now using indices, I need to change the draw command. Here I'm still specifying that we're using a triangle primitive, but I'm sending details of the indices instead of the vertices. 
The vertex information is still in the metal buffer at zero, so the GPU can tie the index information with the vertex information. Here's the set vertex command, and here's the vertex function using the buffer zero. Build and run, and we should get exactly the same result, but now we're using less memory for the vertices. Now let's get this quad moving. We need to send a constant value across all vertices. Every vertex will be repositioned by this constant value. First I'll set up a struct that will hold all the constant values that we'll need later. Currently there's only the one value. I'm going to animate the quad so that it moves backwards and forwards using sine. Sine values are between 1 and minus 1, and if I use time in the calculation, we'll be able to get an animated value. So I'll set up a time property to keep track of how long the app's been running. I'll set up the time variable in draw. Here we're using the view's preferred frames per second property. The default value of this is 60, and the app will do its best to call the draw method 60 times every second. If your code is more complicated, you may find you have to reduce this value to keep your drawing consistent. Now I'll add the animation code. Here we change the animate by constant using the sign of the current time. As the time changes every frame, the sign value will go up and down, so we can use this to change the position of each vertex. And we store this value in the constant struct. We need to tell the command encoder the memory address and length of this struct. Note that I set the buffer index to be 1. Now I need to change the vertex function to accept the constant's value. In shader.metal, I define the constant struct so that the shader functions can recognize it. Remember this is C++ code. I've got used to leaving off the semicolon, so it's hard to get back in the habit. Now I'll set the extra parameter for the constant using buffer1. Each of these constant terms means something different. The first constant tells the GPU that this data is in constant space and not device space. The second is the type of the property, which is the constant struct, and the third is the name of the variable. And remember we put the constant struct bytes into buffer1. This function is executed for each vertex, and we can get the vertex value using this vertex ID with this attribute. So we can extract the vertex value from the vertices array and assign it to a position variable. And add the constant value to the position.x value. And return this new position value instead of returning the vertex value. Let's build and run. And now we see the quad moving across the screen and back. Every frame, a new sign value is calculated, and the vertex function updates every vertex by that sign value. We're currently adding code to the renderer to do the animation. You can imagine that when we start writing a game, that the renderer could get very complicated and tangled. Your challenge is to reorganize the code so that we have a scene graph that takes care of the objects added to the screen. If you've ever used SpriteKit, you'll be familiar with a scene graph. A scene has a hierarchy or tree of nodes. For example, a scene might have a child camera and sprite nodes. Those sprite nodes might have other child nodes. All instructions are in the challenge document accompanying this video. That's it for this video tutorial. 
In the next video, we'll study the vertex and fragment shader functions in more detail and add some more color to our quad. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.